Rosaria is the jack of all trade, unfortunately, master of none. Except for her fake booby. Hey, welcome back to another detailed analysis and guide for Genshin Impact, and this time we have Rosaria, who can actually do a lot of different things. Anyway, as always, this video will start with an analysis and followed by a build guide. So if you're just interested in the build guide, feel free to skip ahead to the middle or the end of the video. And of course, as always, if you enjoy or like the content, don't forget to subscribe. Let's get started. Rosaria's normal attack is a very very slow 5 hit combo. Aside from that, it also doesn't really feature multi hit, meaning that she underutilized Crimson Pike. Your best combo is either 2 attack followed by a dash cancel or 4 attack followed by a dash cancel because of how slow her attack is. Rosaria's elemental skill is a 2 quick jab with the first one moving you behind your target. Know that both of these can trigger reactions separately such as a melt. Hitting an enemy at the back with the second strike will provide Rosario with 12% crit rate for 5 seconds. Know that you must hit the back to get the crit rate. Here you can see that I did not because he turned around so I didn't get the crit rate here. Also know that you cannot teleport behind big enemies such as the rune guard. Rosaria's elemental burst will do 2 quick cryo strike before dropping her pull up into the ground and periodically doing cryo damage. It will also provide your teammate 15% of Rosaria crit rate for 10 seconds. This is a snapshot buff. Rosaria constellations are okay to have. Her C1 increases your damage by about 5 to 10% if you're playing her as a on-field DPS. Rosaria C2 is really really important to have because her elemental burst duration only lasts for 8. So a increase of 4 seconds means that it increases your uptime by 33%. If you're looking to play sub DPS Rosaria or support Rosaria, this is a really really important consolation. And even for main DPS Rosaria, this could benefit as well. D3 is center 3 level increase, so it's your consolation 5. Rosaria consolation 4 regenerates some energy, and since Rosaria is quite energy hungry, this is an okay consolation. And finally, D6 reduced the physical resistance of your opponent who is hit by your elemental burst by 20%. But since you're most likely running super conduct, this is actually not as big as you thought. Nonetheless, it is still a free damage increase. With that being said, a lot of my first attempt to pair her with Fischl for a super conduct and hitting a physical DPS with Crescent Pike. Or maybe just do a Chongyun and a Cryo DPS instead. However, that doesn't really work as there's a fatal flaw. The problem comes from Rosaria herself, with her normal attack being very very slow as well as having low hit count. This also means that she doesn't utilize Crystal Pike as well as other character. Here is a very very quick comparison between Rosaria and Kaya as well as Zhongli. One of the reasons why Crimson Pike is really strong is because the passive scale dramatically with hit count. However, because Rosaria attacks slow and have low hit count, this doesn't really work with Crimson Pike as well as other characters does. Overall, Rosaria adds a physical damage carry, just get outclassed by characters such as Razor, who is really really good at doing physical DPS, or even when paired with Chongyun as a crowd carry, just get outclassed by characters such as Kaya. It's not that it doesn't work, you can play it if you want to. However, it is just that Rosaria as a main DPS role just get outperformed by other characters, especially the 5 star ones such as Hu Tao or Xiao. One of the major reasons why Rosaria is not too good when compared to other characters is because of the existence of Kaya. Rosaria just does the same thing except Kaya does it better. Rosaria's normal attack? Well, Kaya does it better. Kaya does more damage on his normal attack compared to Rosaria, as well as being faster to come out. Rosaria's elemental skill? A 6 second cooldown cryo attack. Well, guess what? Kaya? A 6 second cooldown elemental attack, except it does more damage, generate more energy. Rosaria elemental burst is a deployable cryo attack, and it apply cryo for 8 seconds. Kaya Elemental Burst 
is a deployable cryo attack that attack for 8 seconds and apply cryo as well. And again, except it does more damage than Rosaria. However, there's three things that Rosaria do better than Kaya. The first one being that Rosaria is able to share crit with her teammate through her passive. The second one is that Rosaria constellation are a lot easier to get. And especially when you compare their constellation too, both of them increase the elemental burst duration. However, Kaya constellation 2 not only being harder to get, and it's only increased duration when you defeat the enemy, while for Rosaria it just straight up increases the duration, making Rosaria constellation 2 much much better than Kaya constellation 2. The third thing that Rosaria does better than Kaya, but while she underperformed compared to other character in the main DPS role, as a sub DPS, she actually is quite excellent. She worked really really well in a quick swap type of team where she is able to provide all her party member with critical rate buff, as well as dropping her deployable elemental burst, producing even more damage as well as reaction when she's not on the field. Pay attention to see how I'm capable of melting every single one of Rosaria hit, including the two hit from her initial burst damage, as well as every single periodic tick that's coming out from her elemental burst. Additionally, Rosaria is a perfect replacement for your Diona or your Kaya in your Perma Freeze team, such as the Ganyu Mona Perma Freeze team where you do the Mona extension tech. Here, Rosaria just fit perfectly in. Putting her into your Pyro DPS team to provide Mel's reaction for your Pyro DPS is an option as well. However, being restricted to one spot is definitely very very annoying, so personally here, I will stick to Kaya. And finally, using her to proc server conduct such as your physical razor or your physical curging, or perhaps in the future, a certain end user's license agreement character, is a really really excellent choice as well. Especially with her Constellation 6, which further empower your main physical damage DPS. So while she might not perform well as a main DPS, as a sub DPS or a support, she's definitely excellent as you have seen. And this is also why C2 is really really important because it extends the duration of her elemental burst. That being said, let's move on to the build guide which starting with physical damage Rosaria. The weapon you run is definitely Crescent Pike for a 4 star weapon. However, unless your pike is refined 5, a 5 star weapon is still going to result in more damage with the exception of the Skyward Spine Spear. For your artifact, Force at Gladiator end up being slightly better than 2 Gladiator and 2 Blasting, however they're really close. So if you have better substat on your 2 Blasting, then you could be running that as well. Main stat wise, Sans attack percent, for your goblet, physical damage percent, and for your circlet, crit rate or crit damage. And for your substat, look for crit first, followed by attack percent, followed by energy regen. However, for your talent, you want to go with normal attack first, followed by your elemental burst, and then followed by your elemental skill. In terms of team composition, always always bring visual for super conduct. However, your last two slots can be anything, preferably healing or buffing. For example, Zhongli or Bennett are really really excellent choice. However, some other options you can do are for example Diona, you can do Barber for healing if you really want. You can bring Zhongli and uh, another Geo character for the Geo Resonance, or you can bring Albedo as well. However, a alternative option is to run a hybrid build. Here, we will still be running a Crescent Pike and a Physical Damage Goblet. However, we will be using the Foresight Blitzer Strayer for the 40% critical rate as well as the 50% crowd damage bonuses. We will also add in the Sinkshu for the Perma Freeze purposes and we will keep the official for Superconduct. This is the hybrid build where you run Physical Damage, however, with a Blitzer Strayer Perma Freeze build. The hyper build by running Floor Blizzard can result in 15-25% higher damage 
however require proper rotation to permit freeze as well as seeing Shu, which your pyro DPS might really really want. Identical to the 4 gladiator build, you'll be looking for attack percent on your sands, physical damage on your goblet, and then crit on your circlet. However, just be sure to not overcap on your crit rate since the 4 blizzard set does provide you with about 40% critical rate. And as mentioned before, you have to run both Fischl and Xing Xiu. Your last slot ideally would be a crowd character to help you keep up the permit freeze. For example, a Kaya or a Diona. It is possible to keep it up with just Rosaria herself, but you have to have really really good rotation. This also transactioned really well into the Premier Freeze Cryo Rosaria, which just replaced the Fischl with a Chongyun to hit for cryo damage on her normal attack. You also don't need to bring Diona, you could be bringing another character such as Barber to keep up the Hydro, just bring Zhongli because he's just really really good universally. However, do be careful that you will still have to bring Xing Chu 100% of the time. And of course, the primary purpose of this composition is to use Chongyun for Rosaria to hit for cryo infused normal attack to permanent freeze the enemy along with her other skills. For this build, the artifact simply just again run the 4 set Blizzard Strayer. Uh, but instead of running Crescent Pike for our weapon, we'll be using either a 5 star weapon or Deathmatch or Black Cliff. There are not really other good options, but if you can run a Lithic if you have one as well. And well, your last choice is just gonna be a Refine 5 White Tassel. And again, for your Saints, Attack Percent, uh, Goblet, Crowd Damage, and for your Circlet, either Critical Rate or Critical Damage. For a substat, again, it's gonna be Crit followed by Attack Percent followed by Energy Regeneration. Just be sure not to overcap on your Critical Rate is of the blizzard providing 40% critical rate already. However, as you have seen in the previous section, I much prefer Rosaria to play as a sub DPS role, for example, the Chinese country team. Here, this is the Chinese country team or the national team, except with seeing shield replaced with Rosaria. This gives you the double pyro double cryo synergy as well. Rosaria's job here is to provide critical rate to the entire party as well as to melt the pyro tornado provided by Xiang Lin. This is currently one of the strongest team comp involving Rosaria. You can also replace Chongyun with Kaya here as well, which is something that I've seen people done. In this team composition, Dragonbane is actually a really really viable option on Rosaria. The elemental mastery will help a lot when you're doing melt damage as well as the passive is always apply because the opponent will always be affected by Xiangli Pyro Tornado so they'll be affected by Pyro and you'll be able to get the passive off. However, if you don't have Dragon Bane, again other standard pole arm will work either a Deathmatch or a Black Cliff as you have seen a lot before. And for your artifact, you want to run 2 Noblest and 2 Blizzard Strayer. This will result in the highest damage for your elemental burst. And your main stat, again, a very standard crit on your circlet, power damage on your goblet, and then attack on your stance. For your sub stat, again, crit followed by attack percent followed by energy regeneration. And of course, the final team composition that fit with Rosaria is the permanent freeze team, potentially with Ganyu as the main DPS and Rosaria as the sub DPS. And likewise, for the Tatalia carry version of the permanent freeze team, where you run Chayo in the main DPS slot and you attack with him majority of the time. Here again, just run the 4 Blizzard Strayer on Rosaria, or if you feel like it, you can also again run the 2 Noblest and 2 Blizzard Strayer on your Rosaria. If you don't have a Noblest Carrier in your party, running 4 Noblest on your Rosaria to be the Carrier is also a good option as well. However, for your weapon, not be running Dragon Bane anymore and just run again the other 4 star poem option or 5 star if you're gonna put those on your Rosaria, such as Deathmatch or Black Cliff or Lithic. At the end of the day, while Rosaria can do a lot of different stuff, from physical damage DPS to crowd damage DPS to a support or a sub DPS, 
Caesar doesn't do them good enough as the dedicated one. For example, Rosaria does less damage than Razor in terms of physical, or when you compare to her to any of the 5 star dedicated DPS like Hu Tao, Zhao, Ganyu, she just doesn't do enough to justify being in the DPS slot for your party unless she doesn't have any of these characters. As a support, she doesn't perform as well as something like Bennett or even Xing Chiu. Or even Kaya. But Kaya's existence is a major problem for Rosaria because Kaya pretty much actually does everything Rosaria does, but slightly better. Rosaria also doesn't work well as a major primary support. Primary support meaning that the one you dedicate to support your main DPS, for example in the Lucom, first person I would put in, it's of course Sing Chiu. When you put in Rosaria by herself, you notice that this doesn't work because Rosaria does not provide enough cryo for the Luke to do melt reaction. So you have to put in Sing Chiu. And then afterward, you can think about, oh, maybe I can put Rosaria for additional crit rate as well as occasional melt reaction. And in this case, Rosaria is a secondary support because without Sing Chiu, she will not be able to support the Luke. Some of you might also think, oh, with Rosaria now, I can just run Rosaria and Kaya to support my Luke instead of running Sing Chiu. And that, while you could do, there's still a problem with this, and that is Rosaria still requires an other person to properly support the main DPS. So in this case, Rosaria is still a secondary support. And this is pretty much what I mean by Jack of all trade but master of none. And yes, Rosaria can do a lot of different things, but you will really hard to find cases where you can say, oh, Rosaria is a better DPS than, I don't know, Razors, Kaya, or Rosaria is a better DPS in the loot comp uh, compared to, I don't know, Sing Shu. It's just really, really hard to find cases for those. The scenario Rosaria does work really well, however, is in a quick swap comp. In a quick swap comp, Every single character in your party is providing some value to damage. For example, all of them are doing damage in this Chinese national team or country team comp with Rosaria. And again, they're all supporting each other. Rosaria crit rate can benefit Xiangling, can benefit Chongyun, maybe even Bennett. Bennett Pyro and Elemental Burst can uh, benefit Rosaria, benefit Chongyun, benefit Xiangling. Xiangling Pyro can benefit Chongyun, Xiangling Pyro can benefit Rosario, and etc. And because in this comp, you can kind of think everyone is a support and as a DPS. And because Rosaria can do both of them, this is a scenario where Rosaria does work really, really well. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.